So you can see in the background, I am continuing to work on the fuel tanks. I had drilled out a couple of weeping holes and I wanted to fill those in, uh, redo them. Uh, I had somebody ask a really good question. Uh, what happens if later on down the road you have more weeping holes or you have other issues where you just cannot seem to get those things sealed? How do you seal them? Awesome question. Um, two ways I've discussed. The, the, the question actually specifically asked if there was like a, a spray on that you'd spray over the top of the tank. And there may very well be some external spray. I've not looked at that. Uh, what I have found though, and what other people have told me they've done is they've, like if you have a dimple right, or a divot, right, a rivet right in the middle of the tank that is leaking, uh, what you can do is like take a little ball peen hammer and tap just kind of add a little dent and then put pro seal over that hole, smooth it all out, repaint, it'll be good to go. But it's an exterior seal. And then as a general rule, you kind of want to seal it on the inside of the metal, not the outside. That is one way to solve it. It's, it's how somebody here solved a, uh, uh, it was pretty, pretty blatant leak actually, it was dripping. Um, and they, they didn't want to have to disassemble everything, take it off and all that. They just drained the tank. They solved it that way. And it actually worked great. You, you can't even, you don't even know. You will never know it's there unless you go look for it. The other way is a product called a slosh sealer. Um, <clears throat> it's a very thin uh, alcohol fuel resistant um, product. I don't know. I don't know what you'd call this. It's a chemical. Basically you pour it in the tank, you know, you get in quarter gallon size and then you just take the scent tank and you just kind of slosh it around for lack of a better term. And you have a, you know, you constantly roll it around in the tank um, and you get a good coat on the inside and it will fill all those little pinholes. Uh, the downside to that, of course, is you're going to have to remove your fuel, your, your fuel sender. You're going to have to remove um, the main pickup, which has that screen on it because it'll seal that screen. That's not good. Um, your, your sump, you're gonna have to remove some stuff, right? Uh, and then, and then make those holes such that the slosh sealer can't get on the threads or any of that other stuff. So it's not an easy solution, but it's a solution. Uh, slosh sealer. And as I understand it, it takes a long time to set, like you slosh it around and then it takes, like a week to set. And then you kind of want to do it a couple of times to get a, a, a coating, a thickness. I'm sure there is some working thickness that you want to work it up to, but that's the other way to do it. If I have to go that route, I will. I hope I don't. Um, hopefully this uh, little bit of effort that I have put in here will solve this problem. I'm going to give this a couple days to dry. Then we're going to do tests again and then go from there. I didn't get my hands all dirty. I guess at some point you start getting some proficiency with this nasty shit. So hopefully that will seal the leaks I found across the tanks. I intentionally used way too much uh, Pro Seal on the exterior. I will clean that up once it's completely dry in like a week using this kind of Brillo pad, just kind of scrub it off. You don't want to use a chemical to get it off because that will actually penetrate and that will cause leaks. So I'll scrub it off with this and then do my leak tests again. Um, hopefully that will have solved it because honestly, this is starting to suck. So, all right, onward to other things. All right, well, so, as you can see, um, I'm re removing this bottom row of rivets, or rivets, um, Clecos, because we're not gonna be working on those. We're not gonna be putting those in yet. That's something you do down the road when you attach the front part, the other spar, and all that stuff. So that's, I'm removing these for now. Plus they were only there to kind of hold everything tight together while I riveted these, excuse me. <coughs> um, that was probably loud, sorry. So finally got my wife out here. We were able to get out and do the rest of the riveting along this back. Uh, I didn't do this row because we were in a rush and I can easily get that row myself. When I, when I lower this whole thing, I can kind of I can kind of stand on either side and do this row. That's real easy, you have easy access to it. Same with this one. And these up here, I didn't do because when I put this on the table, I'll lay it, lay it down. I can do it from that end, kind of doing this number. So I tried to make it as painless as possible for her. Um, 
she wouldn't let me film the second time. <laughs> Uh, the only ones I haven't done are these right here and on the other side. And I'll, uh, you can see in this picture right here, it's just super tight. There's not enough room. My big old bear paws won't fit in there. Uh, to that end, I'm going to try to figure out a way, maybe use vice grips or something to hold the bucking bar to where I get some sort of leverage. I, it's almost, this is the first time I've needed a bucking bar that was like, you know, a foot long. I just don't have one. So... <clears throat> gonna work on it though there's a there's a solution here i just not sure how to do it if nothing else i can always fall back on pop rivets but i can get in there and do it so that's where i'm at on this the next thing i did was this um i talk about uh to prime or not to prime in a different video and in that video in the background you can kind of watch me assembling this uh this is the next part of the uh, the the build is putting all these pieces together and this steel sucks to work with it is not fun specifically on this box you have to use one of your steps to drill up these three holes and I basically kind of burnt my way through it because the, my stepper really wasn't cutting it so it, I think it looks kind of ugly but it works it's not perfect but it is what it is <clears throat> and that's where I'm at. You can see I've still got the blue wing on the aluminum because I'm I'm actively uh, still you know putting it together to do the drilling before we actually start uh, final assembly. This is probably one of the areas where I am going to prime. Uh, that's why this was. You're probably wondering why during that extras video I had prime and not to prime, and I specifically had, was doing this in the background, not priming or something. And it's because of the galvanic response that I had talked about. This is aluminum, this is steel, so you need to have a layer of prime between it, so I will prime it. Um, but that's where I'm at on this one, and that's what we're gonna do going forward once I figure out how to get my big fat hands down in there to uh, do, some, do some bucking. I think I'm gonna try to, you know, put this in here or something like that and then hold this I, I don't know we'll see I've got to I got to get creative and inventive on how I'm going to solve some of these problems okay well this seems to work um it's awkward as hell but uh this allows me to get the reach that I want now because you're so far away from here that this moves around a lot so you got to hold real tight but I find using the angled portion of it allows me to kind of offset a little bit and then hold this against the aluminum to get that extra support I need to actually drive the rivet uh, home so uh, it works <clears throat> didn't have to go to uh, pop rivets uh, blind rivets whatever um, I think, you know, you could go to blind rivets here if you just can't manage to get this done. This is such a small portion that if you went to blind rivets right here, I don't think you'd be, I think you'd be okay. Um, that's, that's just my opinion. That's not gospel. I am not rated or certified to, to definitively say whether that's true or not, but it seems like it would be okay if you just used a few. Uh, Vans has over-engineered the hell out of this thing. I think I read somewhere someone said you could replace every other rivet with a blind rivet and the plane would still be fine. I agree with that. I mean, look how many rivets. I mean, there's a rivet every inch, you know, so <clears throat> it's, it's held together well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to keep working on this. Now do the other side and then I have to, you know, flip this around to get down to the bottom. So it's a lot of, like I said, it's awkward more than anything. Let's see if we can get this sucker in here. The other thing is you got to get in here and look at your stuff. Like really tough. Dang. Ah. Can't. <laughs> How am I going to do this? My hand doesn't want to do this. All right, I might be using blind ribbon on that one. Um, hmm. Hmm. I can get to this one. Urgh, shit. Okay.
Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah! Alright. And this one. This is really awkward. Don't ever mistakenly think I know what I'm doing. So I had someone ask me, is this a full-time job? Do I go out here and do this, you know, every day instead of work or instead of, you know, other hobbies? No, I have lots of other hobbies. Uh, so many, in fact, it was one of the big concerns with my wife about my completing this. You know, I, I'm one of those guys that I'll start a hobby, get it half done or just until I'm bored with it, and then move on to something else. I've got stuff, a lot of stuff in a partially completed state. Her concern in the beginning was, is that gonna be a problem with this? Am I gonna spend a lot of money to get this to a half completed state and then not come back to it? Uh, I didn't think so and I still don't because this is varied enough that it keeps my interest. Um, but, and this goes to the how do you stay motivated conversation that we have from time to time. How do you stay motivated? Uh, for me, it's because it is so different uh, and because of this, it helps greatly. Um, each of you are going to have to solve that problem for yourself though. And figure out how you can stay motivated to build it. So, but I have, my hobbies are all cyclical. I'll do something, do something will catch my fancy and I'll work on it furiously for a little while. And then, <clears throat> you know, then, you know, ooh, shiny over there and I'll go work on something else for a little while. I'll eventually come back to it. But in the meantime, I've got stuff in partially completed states. But I do always come out here and work on this. I try to do, <clears throat> I, my goal is to do an hour a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really congested lately. There's, you know, season change. It's we're getting pollen out the wazoo. But uh, I try to come out an hour a day, or average an hour a day. So, for example, I might come out here for eight hours one day and then not come out for the next three days or whatever. Uh, I do. I film everything. Um, I film most of it, not all of it. There are things where, you know, we, I didn't film all of this because once you've seen me drive a rivet, I've driven a rivet. People have said, especially my patrons, that, hey, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're paying you, um, we're willing to pay you to, to watch some of this stuff, but I feel kind of bad showing the same thing over and over again. It's, it's, it's a conversation I've had with another YouTube creator about how you know, how do you keep people interested? How do you not bore the tar out of them by showing the same thing over and over again? And I don't know the answer. Boy, these are awkward. <clears throat> okay, so I don't show everything, no. Man, yeah, that one worked great. These are awkward. Need to, uh, I don't know how you would do that. There's no good way to do this one just due to the shape of this rib. And you can't move this rib over to make room because of, you know, the necessary shape of the plane. Might be SOL on that one. I don't know how many did this one which means I can't get that one either. These two are gonna to be tough. These two I might have to do pop rivets on. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let me get all these other ones done <coughs> and come back to those, those two. Hmm. Creative problem solving. <laughs>
So I wish the weather would hurry up and make up its mind. Um, I swear just the other day it was like 30 outside and now it's 100. It's hot out. Ugh. And, uh, you know, I've got that big fan over there blowing, but it just seems like it's just blowing hot air. Um, anyways, so as you can see in the background, I've got the fuselage uh, down on those cinder blocks. I've finished up getting all of the rivets on the back uh, that I need to get except for those that stripe in the middle and I just need to get up high and you know do this number. I've got my little um, elevation ramp. My I guess it's like a painter's ramp or whatever or stand or I don't know what you would call that damn thing. But anyways, uh, allow me to get up there and work on it. It uh, I've thought about though well, here, let me, let me show you. So I'd thought about going and finding help and taking this whole thing, lifting it up, laying it flat and laying it down on this. I've got some styrofoam on here and, you know, good and protected. And it'll sit here while I basically work on other parts of the plane. Um, I keep running into these, but why? Why not just leave it here? I don't need it anymore. Not right now. I mean, I'm, I'm a little ways before I'm going to need to work on this again. And I think when I do need to work on it again, I'm going to need a lot more access and stability than this little thing can provide. So I'm probably going to put it on my big table. So I would lift it up to put it here only to in a couple days, pick it up and move it again. So why not just leave it here? <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm, I'm going to I put tape on here to, you know, protect it but I'm going to pull all this off so I can get up here and work on this little bit and then I'm going to leave it I mean I just don't see a reason to move it at this point the cinder blocks are pretty you know they're heavy and so it doesn't want to go anywhere because I've got them I've got it uh, clamped down I'm going to leave it here I think Whew. it is getting to the point though where you need help to move it it's not heavy um, I, you know, I, I moved it from up here down onto the cinder blocks. I'd be interested to know what this weighs. I mean, probably only 20 or 30 pounds. Honestly, it's not heavy, but it's awkward. Well, it's got to be more net because I think the spar is more net, but you get my point, maybe 50 or 60 pounds. It's just not heavy. It's just awkward. Um, and so I cannot easily get it to here without finding help. But now I'm, I, th I don't think I will. I think I'm going to leave it here, work on the front parts, the next section. And then once it's time to assemble this sucker, then move it. Yeah. It's always good to have a plan. So that basically completes the mid fuselage ribs and skin. That's section 26 of the plans. Got it all together. Um, I think it looks good. Uh, I put, you know, tape over various things to keep it from scratching me. For now, I'm going to leave it in that upright position. Eventually I'll lay it down once I get the next section 27 done and then we start, you know, connecting them. Um, but that's where I'm at now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. If you want to get notifications whenever I put out a new one of these videos, which I am really trying to put them out more often, hit the bell. Um, and if you want to support this channel, jump over to my Patreon page and for as little as a dollar a month you guys can help support me uh, the other thing is like I said a million times I get people asking all the time if they can if they can do this if this is something that is even possible for them to do if I can do it you can do it seriously anyone can Vans has a whole range of really good products feel free to browse their website they did just update their website lots of good stuff on there if you do decide to order a vans kit if you use my reference number when you order your kit vans will send me a hundred bucks it's just a way of saying thank you to me anyways guys thank you so very much i hope to have more coming very quickly now especially with section 27 which is a lot of little little stuff and then 28 27 is actually short 28 so i'm going to get in there and try to hammer out some of that stuff and, and get more videos up. Plus I've got a couple extras that, that are actually from this video. One talking about to prime or not to prime. Uh, that one's exciting. Uh, and then one I show a 360 of a, 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 a crash that happened just a couple days ago uh, of the aftermath. So anyways, thanks a bunch guys. See you next time.